Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello. Hey. Is everyone ready to go? Because Tom isn't. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Give Me Your Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. My name is Dom. I'm Ant. <laughs> and we're here today with Rivers Johansson. Uh, Rivers, how are you doing, buddy? It's hey. been a long time. <laughs> yeah, how are you, man? How the hell are you? Uh, yeah. Dude, I'm good. I'm thanks, good. Thanks for having me, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I think so, this is a part of the interview where uh, I gush over, like, it's such an honour to be here. It's a pleasure and privilege. Thank you very much for having me. Yada, that is yada, absolutely yada, yada. what you do, really. And then, that I is the, absolutely. then I checked the views in a week, and we've had, like, 150 views, and I'm like, oh, fuck this. I'd, really I'd say 10 at the most. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man, so so obviously it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Um, uh, we met uh, a couple of years ago, when we, or a few, probably more than that now, when we played a gig together. In Hull, yeah. Um, yeah. obviously, you know, we, we, I think it's, you know, I've always admired your music. You've played a few shows for me as well. Um, so tell, tell the Give Me Your Whole Year audience a bit about yourself. Uh, tell us about your music and also how you got into wrestling originally. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I'm a, uh, my original gimmick was a one-man band uh, thing, which <laughs> I'm slowly getting back into. Yeah, the second album is going to be much more of that style um, whenever that comes out. Um, and then I, um, for my album launch a few years ago, decided that I fancy doing it with the full band. And then I kind of, that's where uh, Rivers Johansson and the Deemed Unrighteous kind of was born from. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's all very macabre, dark, uh, death blues, as I call it. So slidey blues, uh, much in the uh, ilk of, I suppose, uh, Lincoln Durham, Jack White. And, uh, you know, I pick little bits of Nick Cave and sprinkle that in there as yeah, well. Yeah, you know? man. Yeah, yeah awesome. man, gotta love him. Nick Cave is my absolute personal Jesus, you know. I love that guy <laughs> so much. I got, um, I got, I got a press release. He's releasing a, a new live album soon, so you'll have to keep an eye out for that. Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Don't yeah. tell me that you've interviewed him as well. Uh, no, it's on my, it's on my bucket list though. All I'm right, okay, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I'm gonna mark out majorly if you ever interview that guy. You know, uh, so. Yeah, well, I've heard. Tell him heard... about me if you do. Tell, drop my name. Put me over. Yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. I've heard he's quite an interesting guy to interview, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. So um, tell us like some some career highlights for yourself because you've you've played some pretty big shows. You've done Humber Street Sesh, uh, obviously sure. playing with playing with my old band Seep Away must have been a highlight for you. Of uh, course, yeah, yeah. Seep Seep Away, man. Are you guys still together? Oh no 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 no! no. That's a story for another time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I just don't, yeah. I, I, you, you still play music with that that chap, though, the tall kid, the tall, good-looking kid Matt. with the guitar. Yeah, yeah Max. Right? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because yeah. um, you've got you've got Mary and the Ram. Is that right? Yeah, that's the um, the kind of post-punk goth uh, project right. with uh, Kieran, who you haven't met. Uh, Sarah, Sarah was Sarah Shields from your band was going to play with us as well. Uh, yeah. and then we've got Eddie Logie uh, involved in that too. So there's a nice little whole. Your connection, my uh, my bandmate Kieran Tanner is amazing. So hopefully, uh, we're going nice. to do some stuff stuff with that this year. But so, you've got solo, you do solo stuff as well, right? Yeah, the electronic stuff, and then we've got yeah. the, par- the Parasitic Twins with Max, uh, which is That's great. The one. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, which is which is. And they've got like a hat trick of musical projects. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so tell us about some career highlights for you. Tell us. Tell oh, us sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah uh, my career high career highlights. Jesus. Um, my most ever favourite gig uh, was um, the uh, Biker Festival I played a couple of years ago in Helmsley. It's the uh, farmyard party that they hold there every year. So I'm in the uh, the blues marquee. It's a great stage, all the lighting and the smoke machines, all the mod cons and stuff, you know. But I'm playing to like 500 like fat, hairy biker dudes, you know, and they're all like really into it, you know. And I'm kind of like, uh, uh, one of my gimmicks is, uh, in my songs, I'll put my guitar down and I'll start cutting a, a promo, basically, on the audience in the vein of a TV evangelist preacher. Uh, and I quote loads of Old Testament verses and all that kind of stuff and basically tell everybody why they're all heathens and they're all yeah, going to yeah. burn in hell, you know? Um, so, <laughs> you know? And at one point, I'm calling all these bikers, I'm like, oh, you're, you're all going down, you're going to burn, you fucking fat pigs, get on your knees and all this kind of stuff. And I'm really laying into them and they're all like really into it. And I thought, I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me after this gig. You know, I'm going to walk out <laughs> this tent. But it was quite the opposite. They're really into it, you know, so I'm kind of like this 
tall but skinny guy kind of like you know and these guys are looming over me like oh, that was amazing that was a great gig thanks so much and i'm just like yeah cheers yeah don't kick my ass you know <laughs> so that was my absolute most favorite that was my absolute most favorite gig followed very closely probably by the main stage when i played in uh, 2017 at humber street sesh that was a really that was a really uh, nice moment as well because we completely fluked that you know we were uh, somebody cancelled and uh, dan mauer uh, offered us that stage and there was another stage and i was just like yeah main stage main stage you know get yeah. us on there you know we black that you know so yeah that was good classic man and classic. of course and of course the adelphi gig with sea for win that was a <laughs> top, three, top three top three gigs man you know. there you go man cheap Ridges, tell us a little bit about your youtube page that's starting soon yeah you got yeah the, uh, yeah make it darker yeah uh, well it's a, a collaborative effort with my friend uh, james um, who is the drummer for, um, uh, oh, hell, what are they called? Man, drawing a blank here. Um, Davidium. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Davidium, yeah. I'm 40 years old, man. I've got all these names and stuff. I can't forget them. <laughs> yeah, he's a drummer for Davidium, which are a really cool, uh, like, hardcore uh, band. Yeah. Um, like, tech, tech, tech metal. They're very, uh, they're like a, a thinking man's metal band. They're really, uh, they're, awesome, they're really yeah. tight, man. I like they're them really a lot. good. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, me and him. We're huge horror guys and cult cinema followers, so we're basically doing a, a, a horror and cult cinema review channel. Um, but we're, we're going to try and go a little more in-depth than the usual stuff you see. So nice. we're really going to kind of uh, try and psychoanalyze all aspects of the movie, like character development, character uh, arcs. Um, as opposed to just going like, well, this is nicely directed and the photography is really good and the performances and blah, blah, not the surface level stuff. We really want to kind of deep dive into it. So hence the reason why we're writing scripts at the moment to, to really kind of pull them, pull them apart. And video essays is the kind of thing we're going to go for. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. I can't Nothing wait. wrong. Yeah, I can't wait to see that, man. And obviously, because yeah. we're a wrestling podcast, um, tell us your earliest wrestling memory. What, what, what got you into wrestling initially? Um, oh, good Lord. Uh, I started watching wrestling in 1991. So um, I can't remember what it was. It was probably an episode of, I don't know, Saturday Night Main Event or <laughs> Superstars or whatever the weekly show was back then. Uh, it was I was just coming out of primary school into secondary school and my friend had Sky TV, you know, um, which was like, you know, wow, back in those days, you know. Mm. Um, so he brought me this VHS tape with uh, a couple of episodes of WWF, whatever the show was, I can't really remember, but I, uh, that's kind of where I got hooked. And it kind of, he would feed me VHS tapes every now and then, you know, and, um, and then my first ever pay-per-view I remember watching would be SummerSlam 92, uh, which was the Bret Hart Bulldog. Uh, yeah, one man, the UK one. Yeah. Um, so, and then from there, I think it's about a year after that, my dad finally stopped being a tight ass and forked out for Sky and we got <laughs> Sky Sports. And then from there on, I started watching every pay-per-view, every episode I could of Raw. Um, and then, yeah, back when Raw was an hour long, you know, 45 minutes with adverts, you know. Wow. So, when it was watchable. Those are the good old days. It was a really tight show. It was really entertaining and like good characters and storylines made sense and, you know. And, uh, and you know, we didn't have wrong. like you know, <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have to quote Kevin Nash vanilla midgets doing flippity flips and you know and kicking out of everything. You know? so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, it's a pleasure to have you on. We're going to do an episode of uh, we obviously have on the channel wrestling with bands where we speak to bands about wrestling who are who are known wrestling fans. So we're going to talk to you a bit more in depth about uh, your history with wrestling and your music career on that. So keep an eye, everybody watching, keep an eye on uh, Rivers returning to the channel uh, for another for another cheap pop. You know, we get. I, I like to get. I like to get a couple of cheap pops in there where I can do. So uh, look forward to having you back. But yeah, um, so Anthony, we're here to talk about the news and the latest. Yeah, news. man. Let's talk about um, the news. Uh, there will be links to all of River's stuff down in the description, so go and, and check it out. And also our review of the SummerSlam '92 pay per view because we've done that. We have, and we, we have. loved it, didn't All we, Dan? Right. We did, yeah. We did. Oh. Uh, we did a watch along. So, well, a what, what was your favourite match in that? Nails. Well, who was Nails against in that? Oh, yeah. The the Mount, Nails, he, I can't even remember. Man. Yeah, Nails remember. did fight because there was a whole thing about him uh, wanting to get paid more for going, and the, the whole sexual assault at backstage with Vince McMahon happened. 
Wow. Wow. Yeah, with nails, yeah. There we go. And so let's go into the news. And speaking of speaking (laughs) out... (laughs) <laughs> it was good. So uh, let's get serious because let's talk about the speaking out movement, which has been a massive movement. It actually, last week, was, we've been doing these weekly. We've been very good with it. And last week, we fell out of love with wrestling a little bit. The oh, stories sorry. that were coming out because of hashtag speaking, hashtag speaking out have been horrendous. And if you want to read them stories, you should go and search on Twitter for them. They're all out there. Um, we're not happy talking about individual stories um, and and everything. We disagree with everything that's happened, uh, but let everything settle out, whether that's uh, allegations that have been made on both sides. Um, but it is seeing some positive changes within uh, wrestling and within UK law. So something that was released today was that the Sexual Offensive Act, uh, Offenses Act, which was 1993, um, they're looking at changing that ever so slightly. So at the minute, that covers teachers. Um, so anyone that's a teacher, but it doesn't cover sports coaches. And part of the hashtag speaking out movement has made developments in that. And one of the mm. The policies that they're putting through is that it's also going to affect trainers within sports, which is obviously someone that people look up to uh, and in a position of power. Um, so hopefully that's going to get changed and they are looking at rectifying that. So that's really good news. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, it's exciting. I think obviously uh, when I say that, I mean that for, for progression and development, it's a, it's a good, it's a good and positive change. I think it's a, you know, it's necessary. And I think a lot of the stories around coaches uh, taking advantage of their trainees, um, you know, it, it's quite disturbing to see people in a position of a power, of power abusing that power um, and taking advantage and some of these stories aren't recent stories they go back years and these have not been talked about for years until this speaking out movement on twitter so i think that it's a it's a really good positive step in the right direction um and obviously things i think there's going to be more positive changes as well um obviously you know there's potential for uh, unions and things like that to spring out of this fingers um, crossed yeah yeah so obviously that's cool have you been keeping abreast of this um uh, rivers have you have you kind of uh, heard about the speaking out movement are you aware? i don't yeah. know if abreast is the right term yeah. to use right <laughs> now yeah. sorry aware are you keeping aware you? thank you i'm very aware, aware. I'm, sorry. I'm very aware of breasts um yeah I've, yeah I've, I've kind of been keeping up to date with it somewhat um and yeah i i agree that it's, it's high time that um it's uh it's, it's to be policed the the the, mm. the wrestling world i suppose in like training and stuff like that because wrestling is pretty much the wild west and and god knows how far back these uh assault and and, and inappropriate behavior goes you know i mean it must be right back to the the very birth of wrestling itself when it was mm. a big old carny show um so it's it's high time that they kind of got some rules and regulations in there because i heard mm. stories of like people like kids being trained as young as like 11, 12 years old, which I think is absolutely bonkers. Like, you know, 12 year old kids like running around a ring just for, not, yeah. not, despite all of the abuse and stuff, just a 12 year old kid taking bumps, for instance, it just doesn't, it mm. seems a bit nuts to me, really. Um, it, I think it, it needs definitely to be. should be 16, I think, should be a, a level, a, an age of training. And then, you know, um, and then, yeah, there should definitely be laws or rules about like, you know, I don't know, trainers being involved with trainees so to speak you know mm, mm, just make everything eight just make everything 18 i think if they're 18 years old and so on and so forth then i don't know i guess if they're old enough to vote drink everything you know i don't know it's just you know D- it's depending just, on the country you're in <laughs> yeah yeah, well, yeah 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 yeah, 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 I think... um, on. yeah sorry now just it's actually it's such a tricky thing to comment on because it's so uh yeah. it's just so ugly and and I just feel so horrendous for the people that have been affected by it, you know. And mm. uh, it, it, you know what it, re- it reminds me of? It reminds me big time when I was 15 years old in school and I remember a handful of the, the popular girls in the year, they all had boyfriends who were like 21 to 25 and they're all kind of walking around bragging about it. And I just remember thinking it was so odd that mm. a 25-year-old would want to go out with a 15-year-old. You know, mm. it never made any mm. sense to me at all. Because I kept yeah. thinking to myself, oh, if, I, if I was 25, I'd want to go out with a 25-year-old because 25-year-olds are hot, you know? But um, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, just, it's just rife everywhere in life, not just wrestling. It's absolutely yeah. rife. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've sort of seen it taking different um, bounds. So obviously they had the Harvey Weinstein stuff uh, sure. last year in the yeah. acting world and now wrestling as well as uh, football, I believe, was last yeah. year as well. There was a big thing with football. It's like, where, where's next? And, and actually it is about cleaning up the entire world because mm. this sort of stuff shouldn't be happening. I mean, when it comes to wrestling, one of the things that surprises me most is that you don't, to, to work in WWE or, or most wrestling associations, you don't need to have a DBS check. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you yeah, were in a gym, a you have to have a DBS check. You know, mm-hmm. it yeah, seems yeah. like the, the minimum not. sort of step to 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 put there. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, like you say, you know, it's a, it's a it's really interesting, and obviously there are there are you know a number of things that have come out, and some of them, you know, there are there are individuals that have multiple stories you know, multiple stories and multiple people have come forward. Uh, and those are the ones you're seeing action being taken against. Of course, there are a few uh, one-off examples. And in the wrestling world, they're not being, you know, uh, there's a couple of people that have been accused, for example, on Twitter with, very, with, with um, you know, evidence, not, you know what I mean, just, just rumours, sort of hearsay. And I think it's a very much a case of what I'm seeing is innocent until proven guilty, I think that's what what seems to be taking shape at the moment. People are the problem with social media is it sort of doesn't work like that. Like mm. people go, uh, "This is a story, and therefore guilty until proven innocent," which is mm. a different I, I, way. I often find that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, which is a different way that our society is sort of taking things with social media as opposed to uh, innocent until proven guilty, which is the law of our land. You know. Mm. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're not going to talk about any of the individual stories, but I do recommend that everyone goes and checks them out because they are worth hearing. You know, it's 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 good to be aware of what's happening, um, and even though it's a really sad time to be a wrestling fan because of that, but let's mm. clean it up and let's get it sorted. I think um, that- but we are going to talk, talk talk about a couple of people who have been released from various companies. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think as well we should preface our, our further discussion with it's important to make your own minds obviously we have our opinions uh, we brought rivers on to talk about his thoughts as well uh, you know we do we do support um people you know being open and honest about their experiences and absolutely we support everyone you know who, who is who has taken the steps to to speak out and of course there are you know there are di- a lot of difficulties doing that and people have had a very difficult and challenging time doing that so we respect uh, people's um right to do that and be honest and, and talk so, about so brave, man. Yeah, so course. brave. Of so course. brave. But but like like Anthony says, you need to go and make your own mind up. You know, you need to go and make your own uh, your own opinions and thoughts about the individual cases because there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, yeah, and, uh, there you is. Know, and like I say, not all of it. We were like I say, we've seen examples of people being uh, picked out, which we're going to talk about. But not every not everybody is guilty. There's there's you know there's a lot of hearsay on there as well. So, you know, there are, there are rumours, um, but obviously please do make up your own minds and uh, make up your own uh, sort of opinions on it. Groovy. So first release style we're going to talk about who was released almost straight away the same day, uh, day after the Speaking Out movement came. Uh, Jack Gallagher, gone. Uh, completely deleted from the WWE's official website. Completely deleted from the alumni section, which is normally where wrestlers go. Uh, Jack Gallagher. Mm-hmm. Far out. Well, um, I mean, yeah, I, I had no idea what's what was the uh, what was the allegations against him. I mean, he must have done something really bad. Yeah, you know? there were, there were yeah. several. There I, was I don't several, want yeah. to go into yeah. any individual allegations, but yeah. there was right. there were several allegations, and it sounds. I I assume that he's either gone and said yes, it's true, or there's been something un, uh, unrefutable, and then they've said we've released yeah. him. I think. Um, yeah. I mean, it, how he's going to regret that awful tattoo, right? Oh, the chest tattoo. Oh, my God. Yeah, the chest, the ship thing on his chest. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Pretty, I yeah. mean, that was, like, ranked one or two with terrible tattoos in wrestling right now, him and Cody. I mean, I mean, these are very these are very separate issues, guys. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, it's a, shame. it's a shame for British wrestling, of course. You know, a number of the people, are, you know, we can't forget that a number of the people accused of, are, of course, um, northern wrestlers, and you know, like in the mo- in most entertainment industries, of course, you have a predominantly uh, southern, um, you know, sort of sort of audience for that. With the wrestling, WWE's training school being down south in London, 
Um, and, you know, most talents do kind of get picked from the Midlands and, and down south. So it's a real shame for, for um, Jack, who's obviously... When I say a shame, I need to be careful about this. I have no idea what you're talking about. What are you talking about, the South-North divide? Well, What's this all about? I'm, I'm just saying it's a shame, that because obviously Jack's from Manchester. <laughs> what are you talking about? Jack's an idiot. Gone. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but speak, speaking of a... Uh... Speaking of really bad tattoos, you know, um, yeah, yeah, the, the, the neck, the neck tattoo that Cody's got. I think it's really funny that Cody Rhodes has a neck tattoo on his chest, and he's got a chest tattoo on his neck. He got him the wrong way around, <laughs> you know. That skull with the flag should be right here because that's kind of look cool. And it did. It would. Be on his neck, you know. You're right. You're right, yeah. man. You're right. He got him the yeah, wrong way around. Man. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He did. I think Brandy would be much happier if he if he got. Yeah, tattoo, but... yeah. I um, I saw the the. Um, her segment and she was sort of dropping I think she was talking with Darby Allen about it um, yeah she did a cooking yeah. thing with Darby yeah. Allen didn't she and she was like yeah no he didn't tell me that was happening I want the best placed um, more WWE releases then um, which were released later on um, they've released Travis Banks uh, talking about from down south I don't know what he's on about there he's way down south down from New Zealand and El Ligero have both been released following the allegations yeah Ligero is of course from Leeds and he is? Uh, Jack is from Manchester uh, which was my reference point but yeah ah. Yeah, um, but yeah, obviously not great for not great for British wrestling and, and not great for. It's not uh, great for wrestling. Full stop. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Um, um, yeah, Laguerre had had a lot of upside. I think like he could have done really well as as one of them sort of talents. Like Jack Gallagher was in the Royal Rumble a couple of years ago. You know, in a really great segment. Yeah, yeah, he had the, he had that the, match he had a few years ago with. Um, uh, um, oh, what's his called? Uh, Bastard Pack. What it was called? What was it called in WWE? Uh, Neville. Uh, Neville. Neville. Yeah, yeah. They have a match. At, I think it was. What did they have a match at Royal Rumble? That seemed, that was a really good match as well. Uh, or was it I, Neville and? They had a title been. match for the Cruiserweight. Uh, yeah, they I did think at he, one point. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Pretty sure it was Royal Rumble. Right. I might be wrong. Right. It might My be. Memories hazy. But anyway, right. yeah. So he, he was having a really good run there for at one point. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the other guy from WWE got... Uh, well, he's not gone. He's suspended from NXT UK currently. WWE has suspended him. So obviously, they're the, the treating the cases individually, which they need to be treated as individually. Um, they've yeah. suspended Joe Coffey, again, from NXT UK. But they've also fired the referees Joel Allen and Chris Roberts. Mm. Mm. Is John Devlin... Have we not heard about John Devlin yet? Is John Devlin, John Devlin hasn't been suspended or anything right. yet. So okay. there are allegations that are out against him, but yeah. nothing's happened yet. Yeah, of course, so of course. John we... Devlin, or as I know him, crap Finn Balor. So yeah, yeah. John <laughs> Big Devlin, headed yeah. Finn, Finn Balor, I believe. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's just, he's, just, he's just shorter Finn Balor. Who cares? But, but budget Balor. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. if anything does turn out, then I hope he is fired like the rest of them, to be perfectly honest. Obviously, um, there, there are allegations, you know, outside of WWE. Of course, David Starr was the one that started it all. And obviously, obviously America uh, in the US. So, of course, it is taking shape all over the world now. Yeah, good. Um, good. You know, there, but there have been other names. Um, there are. I've got, I've got some here. Yeah. Uh, the next one, Joey Ryan. Yeah, Joey. Yeah. I mean, that, so Joey Ryan and Dave Christ were both, Dave Chris, Chris, Dave Chris from Thank from you. Impact. There's a few from people Impact. from Impact. Yeah. So that's that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because you look at Joey Ryan's gimmick, and. My God, it's awful now, isn't it? It is. It is. It's awful. Um, it it was, always was. It always was. You, know? you see, I didn't mind it. I thought it was quite yeah. fun. But now with that behind it, that is yeah. sick. He, of yeah, course, has, he, he of course mm. has the tagline on his, or he did until he deleted his Twitter. His uh, cover photo for his social media was bringing the sleaze back to wrestling. Um, mm. So it was a huge part of his gimmick. Um, you know, and, and obviously, and some, real life. yeah, some yeah. some some big names took the. Um, I think it was. I think it was aptly named. I think it was called the Dick Flip. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Mick Foley took it once. Yeah, he did. Um, yeah. You know, there were a few people that you know, a few big names that have taken and have worked with Joey Ryan. Um, Ultimately, I think it was one of them gimmicks that you could show to someone that wasn't a wrestling fan and they could have a laugh at yeah, it. Yeah, it's entertaining. And, um, well, yeah, well, it's entertaining. Well, well, yeah. Um, but again, now, like, it's just sick. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Context is uh, is key with these things. Yeah. I also find it quite amusing as well um, uh, that uh, the two biggest virtue signalers on Twitter, uh, Joey Ryan and David Starr, happen to be the two biggest pieces of shit as well. 
So, yeah. you know, um, yeah. I, thought that, I found that quite ironic, you know. So, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. Um, David Starr was the one campaigning as we bolted yeah, sure. up. Ironically, you know, that might actually happen. It's more likely to happen now. Uh, but he was campaigning for a union for years. Uh, for wrestlers yeah. um you know uh, that was his, yeah. that was his thing that was his thing that was his you know his there's thing. another guy that i don't want to talk about that was also um campaigning for a union that's been part of this as well okay yeah she's mad which is mad and you just think what, what, how how anyway yeah. uh let's move yeah. on from that so kit staying on impact so uh tessa blanchard has been released from impact so she wouldn't travel up to the shows uh impact fired her believing that she's been difficult to work with uh for and they've had problems with her in the past haven't they there's been racist allegations and all sorts going in the yeah. past um AEW, i believe to be interested but wwe very much are yeah absolutely i think um you know, uh, Tessa Blanchard made history, you know, like I say, as part of Impact and, and Impact seems to, she seems to have been a part of Impact's resurgence over the last sort of two, three years. I'd agree. Um, and and um, it's a real shame, but, you know, WWE, the business that it is, you know, they're going to offer a lot more money to travel and take risks during this time. And I think that she knows that because I think she was after a day rate from Impact and that was one of the cross the crossed wires there was that she wanted a day rate to record segments for them. Uh, but WWE, of course, have that money and that uh, capability. So I think that they're, they're, it's good business, I suppose, to bring Tessa in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think she's, uh, from what I've seen of her, she's a, she's a really good worker. You know, she seems to, uh, I like wrestlers that take it uh, seriously. You know, mm-hmm. such you know, like I like a wrestler that you know just tells good stories in the ring, has a good work rate, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think she's, uh, I think she could go really far. I'm not really sure what the allegations were, the racist allegations were. I'm not kept up to date with that. There, there was some, um, and I'm yeah. not entirely sure why CNA let her go. Why did they let her go? Impact. I believe it was because she refused to travel uh, yeah, right, to okay. the recent uh, tapings. Uh, yeah, I, I, and I'm being okay. difficult as in yeah. in a long term thing. I think she wanted right. she wanted a, uh, money. She wanted a day rate for okay. recording stuff. So when they asked her to record things, she wanted pay extra. You know, a, a specific amount. Yeah, that was it as well. There was because uh, of the COVID situation as well. She wanted the same rate as she was getting as well, and the company couldn't afford to do that as well. Mm. I believe is that right, Dom? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, and the reverse, of course. On a, you, know, you have the Good Brothers now, who have uh, more or less ninety nine percent signed with Impact, uh, Gallows and Anderson. So of course that's a, a reverse. Um, so with, I mean, that's uh, you know, like I say, TNA and Impact are on a. We're on a resurgence now, um, and I think that you know, a signing like that, you know, one of the best tag teams of of the last ten years, uh, Gallows and Anderson, who also have the ability with this contract to work on uh, New Japan. Yes, so that that's be, big for them, isn't it? Yeah, that's massive for them. So I think that it's a, it's a good business decision, uh, you know, and if, you know, for, especially for Impact, who need stars like that um, to 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 sort of help build their resurgence. Yeah, I think those guys belong in Japan, really. That's kind of where they seem to have the best years of the career, really. Mm-hmm. You know, when they were hanging out with the Bullet Club and all that, you know, Gallows and Anderson. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see them back back in Japan, really. Um, so that'd be good. Yeah, I'm ju- personally, I'm just hoping that the contract remains loose so they could do some work in AEW because their tag team division is fire at the minute. Like, yeah. possibly yeah. the best yeah. tag division uh, of all time, you know? Yeah. I, they, I, they take it seriously as such, don't they, really? So it's nice that they kind yeah. of, you know, put the effort and take it seriously. You know? Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah. from sort of history point, I'd say the, the best prior to what we've got now was sort of the Hardy, Studley, Edge and Christian period, uh, APA, you yeah, know, the, sort the of attitude. Yeah, yeah. But I actually think that this AEW tag team division is, is, is surpassing that. Mm. The last time I seem to remember caring about tag team wrestling was maybe the late nineties, early two thousands. You know, mm. somewhere around the, in the, basically the Attitude Era, somewhere around there is when I remember last really being invested in it. And yeah. since then, like WWE in particular, have really you know they've never really carried the ball there for tag teams. So mm. oh, it's been rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been, it's always, <laughs> trouble is with uh, with all these releases that are going on at the moment and stuff and. Uh, selfishly I'm, I'm kind of glad that people are getting let go left right and center because for me wwe could do with getting rid of 70 percent of their uh, roster you know it's so uh, they've got so many wrestlers there it's so over bloated and i just don't think you know like for the women's division when you've got dana brooke it's like well, why, why do we have, you know 
Mm. Nothing against her personally, but like, why, why are we wasting our time watching Dana Brooke when, you know, we've got Io Shirai, we've got Askers, we've got, you know, Sasha Banks, Bailey's, when we've got all these guys, you know, Candice LeRae's, when we've got all of these, these kind of guys, you know, just cut, trim the fat, you know, and, and, and you know, let's have a more, con, uh, a more condensed, condensed, yeah, yeah. condensed. I, I, uh, I agree with you, kind of, but I, I also yeah. think that they have so much time that they could do stuff, but they don't. Mm. Because yeah, they don't well, tell that's stories, true, that's true. you know? Yeah, like yeah. Charlotte Flair being on every show that's possible isn't giving yeah, someone yeah. like Dana Brooke the ability to tell a simple story in the ring. No. Yeah. You know? And if you, if, you, if you was to cut it like that, then ha- a year ago, you probably would have cut Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, uh, for example, whereas now they're actually doing incredible work, you know, some of the best stuff in WWE. Right. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, so staying on impact, oh, you've done Luke and Gallows and Khan, and let's go to AEW briefly with releases. Jimmy Havoc has been sent into counselling uh, to receive treatment after the allegations on social media. Uh, AEW row evaluating Havoc's status with our company and will address it when he has successfully completed his rehabilitation. Yeah, just to clarify, you said releases, so no one has actually actively been released from Impact yet. Uh, I don't believe. So Jimmy Havoc hasn't been released. He's still under contract. No, he hasn't been released. They're sending him to counselling and then they're going to um, address uh, his status with the company after mm. his mm. rehabilitation. Yeah. So again, shame uh, in terms of his talent. Um, but How do you feel about the way AEW are handling that? So instead of what WWE are doing and sort of releasing people, um, sending him to rehabilitation to then decide on his status with the company? I think that's a very specific, it's a thing very specific to a person, you know, it's whether you believe in, you know, everyone's going to, uh, people that, that, uh, that do these kind of things are going to burn in hell immediately and should be left to die or whether you believe that they deserve a second chance. Um, and I think it's as simple as that. Um, I believe personally, uh, you know, I, I believe that people in most cases, uh, remember, I don't know the facts about, all the stuff about Jimmy Havoc. Um, you know, like I say, usually I tend to believe that people deserve a second chance. However, this, um, like I say, a lot of these stories have been quite horrific um, in terms of age gaps, in terms of consent uh, and things yeah. like that and things of that nature. So, of course, you know, this is very, very unprecedented in terms of, you know, how it's going to change the wrestling community. So um, what do I think of the way they've dealt with it? I think a lot of people criticised the way they dealt with Jimmy Havoc, but then there was another statement. What was the other statement they did about another member of the roster? And that came across very classy. There was another very... Uh, Sammy Guevara. I'll go Sammy on Guevara, there you go. Yeah. So Sammy Guevara, they, 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 they applauded the Sammy Guevara stuff, I think, in terms of the way that was handled. But they... They repri- uh, well, they, I mean, the Twitter wrestling community reprimanded AW for the way of handling the Jimmy Havoc stuff from saying we're going to send him to counselling. But, you know... I think it's been mixed, uh, and that's why I sort of asked your opinion on it, really. Uh, yeah. But, what, what, do you yeah, have an opinion Rivers, on it, Rivers? Yeah. Yeah, look, uh, there's the Sammy Guevara thing. Um, I, I, like, I like Dom's point of view of, of, of giving people a second chance, by and large, unless they've done something that's really mm. horrific. And I think what Sammy Guevara said, his, it was a shitty comment and a, a really bad joke. Yeah, yeah. so Sammy Guevara but, you know, in 2006. I, mean, look, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't crucify the guy for saying shitty things. I've said a million and one shitty things throughout my life. I've said that a, we've all regretted. Yeah. yeah, I've said a million. Yeah. I've, I've told a million bad jokes and I've, I've hit the wrong note at the wrong time. You know, I've done that. You know, it's all part and parcel of just being a person, you know. So, yeah, he said a shitty thing. But, you know, in his defence, it was four years ago. It was on a podcast. It was a throwaway comment, you know. And I'm, I'm not... On the, on the flip side of that, I'm, I've, I've got a, a real issue with people trawling through people's pasts and mm. trying to find the, the one little thing. Oh, you mm-hmm. said, back in 2012, you said this. So, therefore, you're over. You get the fuck out of here. You're cancelled. It's done. Get out of here. You know, I, I, yeah. I can't stand that attitude, you know. Yeah. I, I, th- I, I think people should have a second chance. Four years Obviously, is a long time, man. It is, yeah, exactly. Compared to, compared to what compared to what the crime the crime is, it, 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 they deserve a second chance, you know. For shitty yeah, comments, well, 
Yes. Sammy Guevara has been put under sensitivity training, whatever that yeah, sort of means, sure. um, as opposed to counselling and rehabilitation. Yeah, I think yeah. one of the things that's most notable about this is that he uh, and Sasha actually spoke. Yeah. And yeah. made an effort to speak. He apologised. Uh, Sasha, made, Sasha made a statement. Sammy made a statement publicly on his YouTube channel, which we can all go and see, and you can see how apologetic he is. Um, and I think of all of these uh, speaking out uh, allegations, accusations, I think that's been the one that's been handled the best uh, by all parties concerned. I don't really know if it, if that's even part of the speaking out or just something that would have come out anyway. It's mm. a bit of a weird one because it is just something that's been said in a in a, a silly, yeah. it's a silly thing to say. Uh, somebody especially... troll somebody trolled through his past. Yeah interviews and stuff and found that yeah. little sound bite and then they just and that's what I, I can't stand that kind of thing mm. you know yeah. They, they, yeah, they, yeah somebody deliberately looked for that and, and pulled it up and, and then threw it out there when, when and to be fair there's there's you know there's, there's larger crimes going on in the world you know there's larger things to to uh, jump on board you know there's, 100%, there's you know 100 percent there's there's real there's real um, again i'm not excusing what he did shitty thing but there's there's real issues like people being actually raped uh you know and taken advantage of that's mm -hmm. something that has to stop, you know. Yeah, and that's people saying a shitty people saying a shitty comment when they're like 20, 21 years old. Slap on the wrist, move on, you know. But but yeah. but but again, you know, like I say, it's 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 not acceptable traditionally, you know. That would be reprimanded in most institutions. But again, you know, you've got to take note and say, you know, Sammy and and Sasha both dealt with it very very well. Yeah. And Sammy's not kicked off and said just because you know he's not said. I've spoken to Sasha. She's forgiven me. So why am I being fired? He's taking it on. He's taking his slap on the wrist. And I think. Well, he know, hasn't been fired, has he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's shown sensitivity. Yeah, sensitive. And I think he's yeah. showing actual remorse, and he's showing yeah. that he, he's willing to grow and change and develop. So, you know, uh, I think that's very, very admirable. Mm -hmm. It, and and with, Jimmy Havoc, with Jimmy Havoc, if he's dealing with uh, substance abuse issues and stuff like that, then. You know, I'll, I'll God speak to him, you know. I mean, I never particularly liked his gimmick or anything, but, like, you know, don't wish, I don't have any ill wishes towards no. the guy. I hope, no. I, hope he, I hope he can kind of get the rehab he needs and get the help he needs and, and get through that, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what allegations have been put up against him, but, you know, um, there's, again. They're the bad. Yeah, there, yeah there's, there's, a few, uh, okay. there's a few things. There's quite a range of things against him as well. But right. obviously, well, obviously... We're, we're here to debate. We don't know. We don't yeah. understand the facts. So, no. you know, um, let's see what happens in, in, with that. I yeah. think for me, well, if, one there, of if, it... there are, if there's serious allegations and there's evidence, then therefore they should be give obviously that should be taken to the law and the law should deal with that appropriately, you know? Mm. Absolutely. So, um, it's, not up to, it's not up to Twitter and the Twitter, the wrestling Twitter to, you know, yeah. be trial. All these, all these the podcasts. Jury and execution. <laughs> yeah, all these podcasts. Yeah, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. You know, but, um, yeah. what, I think for me, one of the interesting things is that uh, AEW is saying that they'll uh, look at his case after the rehabilitation. For me, like, it's a little bit more... If if he if his victims can't forgive him for 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 what's happened, and if he can't reconcile that with the victims, how can you have him on TV? Well, historically, you know there are plenty of examples of of uh, you know in WWE particularly of people. Mike Tyson. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I mean, you can go yeah, exactly. You can go in you know, all errors and find people that have been accused and proven uh, very, very negative stuff against. And, you know, if the, yeah. if, the, if the gimmick and the time is right, then if it's best for business, then they'll find a way to put him in. I mean, they bought Ultimate Warrior back. They bought yeah. Hulk Hogan back. Yeah. Um, you know, Mike Tyson, of course, rightly or wrongly, yeah. is now an AEW fixture. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I think they're being very careful, of course, right now. It's such... It's such a, a strange, slippery slope, like right across the entertainment world, you know? Because, mm. oh, I don't know, it's just, it's crazy because, you know, you find out stuff about people all the time. You're like, oh, I used to really like that guy and now I can't watch his stuff anymore or I can't listen to his music, you know? Mm. Um, mm. The, the chap from Brand New, the band Brand New, uh, he had alligator, you know? Jesse Lacey, yes. 
you know, here's the thing as well. Like, you know, David Bowie, it's well known that David Bowie slept with underage girls, mm -hmm. like 14, 15 year old girls, mm -hmm. uh, groupies, you know, mm -hmm. as they used to be called back in the day. Um, and yeah, you know, he's just, just nothing. That, never been, that, never been. That, that's the thing, you know, you bring up your school environment. You know, yeah. you can you can make the argument, of course, for our generation, but this is where it gets contentious. You know, yeah. we can be like, in our day, it was a little different. Definitely yeah. doesn't make it better. Definitely doesn't no. make it okay. No, but, but we, well, no. But this is a time for change, isn't it? This and this is, is, yeah. this is it. We we didn't grow up in a time for change. Well, there should have been. Well, there were, there were changes that happened when yeah. we were growing up that affected us, but it wasn't at this to this point. Yeah. It was other things, you know. So I think you are right. I think that's a really good sort of soundbite point. There is we are we're now in a time for change, and and this generation of people uh, are making positive change. I think it, I think it's nearly impossible, but I just want a really clear set of 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 guidelines, you know. So like this, this, and this, and this should ha if this happens, this happens. If this happens, this happens, you know. Um, in most and, yeah, in most businesses, yeah, I, and organizations. I do. I, I agree with. You. I mean, like like yeah. I agree with you completely. I, I, I don't think it is clear because we talk about emotions and stuff like that and we hold in high regard people like Lewis Carroll and stuff like that. Um, whereas yeah. actually the work is muddied, you know, yeah. Michael Jackson. Like these, these wrestlers that have been released, how do, you all f how do you all feel about going back and sort of watching that? Well, matches? this is a massive debate, you know, we can, we can bring in music here. Uh, you know, obviously myself, you know, and Anthony, we've talked off, off, off podcasts how much of a, we're big Marilyn Manson fans. And of course, his, you know, he has some very uh, well-documented accusations, especially over the last two or three years. Uh, but you don't see them, you don't see them much in the press. And there's certain no. reasons why, of course, you're not seeing them in the press. Uh, money can do wonderful things to protect you. Uh, but, but in terms of wrestling, could you watch rewatch a Jack Gallagher match without having this in the back of your mind? No, but then, but 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 but, but the argument should be: Could we go? Should we? Are we all going to stop listening to David Bowie after this podcast? No. So it's no. the same thing. It depends who the per it depends on the person and their art. Doesn't it? It's it's. This is like, this, this is gonna, this is going to sound really dark and, and and perhaps bad, but I love. That's I why really we got you here, Rivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I really really love to watch Chris Benoit wrestle. Mm, you know, and mm. he he murdered his wife and kids. But look, mm. his matches are superb. That's it. You know, can you yeah. It's that age-old question: Can you separate the art from the artist? Because the art isn't the same thing so of course what it is what it is for me it's like i watch the match and i'm like oh this is so good he was so good and it breaks my heart you know so mm. i don't i don't watch and go wow yeah this is really great wow i'm having such a good time there's always that it's, it hangs on me you know mm. but there's always something there yeah i agree you know but I think they're that's damn it. good man they're da he yeah. was so damn good it's so it's damn good eyes, man. Yeah. but yeah. Uh, but i think we know we're not we're not we're not you know jack gallagher and david bowie are on different levels of notoriety and i think that that's the thing uh, sure. but m maybe sure. that's what rivers is saying where he's saying jack gallagher and chris benoit because it's a very it's a similar thing what mm. what chris benoit well, did was heinous it was well, horrible it was disgusting yeah what jack gallagher done is horrible and disgusting yeah. and actually i think rivers is right that you can go back and watch chris benoit because of the artistry that uh, went into yeah. His matches, you and know? you can do the same with Ultimate Warrior, and you can do the same yeah. with um, yeah, Jimmy. Stewart. Much like I can listen to a David okay. Bowie record, or I can listen to Elvis Presley, who <laughs> met Priscilla when she was fourteen years old. We'll say, mm. well, Adam, mm. you know, of course, um, absolutely. Uh, so I don't know. I, oh God, it's gross, but it's and, gross. But uh, but then you know, a good example of, of this, you know, in, in a wrestling context, you know, in terms of this, is you know, there are there are some names on this list. You know, like I say, you know, Sammy Guevara. Has, has now been, you know, there, there will be permanent news articles based on this about him. So if somebody approaches, you know, if, if a new fan looks at Sammy Guevara and Googles him, then stuff is going to come up, you know what I mean? So I yeah. think it's about, it's an individual case by case thing where people can hopefully look beyond the, 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 the person's past and towards the future, you know, and like there are there are numerous names here where I hope it doesn't have any adverse effects on their career in the long term. Because I hope not, not for Sammy Guevara. I certainly yeah. hope it doesn't kind of have adverse effects on his career because he's a young it's kid. It's a different he's got, thing, he's, and yeah. he's really good. It's a completely different thing. Yeah, a shitty comment is is a million miles yeah, away. Yeah, it from... is a different. It is a different thing, you know. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. 
Cool. Right. Moving on from yeah. all of that hashtag speaking out that we're not going to speak about, but actually had some really well, good mature well, we discussions. Did, yeah, we definitely. Important. Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, and uh, you know, obviously respectfully. Um, yeah. you know, and God speak to all the victims as well. Like yeah. I hope they can, you know, absolutely, repair, you know, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. And all the people that haven't spoken out, like that's not, yeah. It's, yeah. it's an individual thing and you need to uh, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, you know, and if you have any issues, go to the police or, or whatever's Absolutely. best for you. There is support out there for everyone. Right. Performance Centre has COVID-19. Yes, yes. Uh, Renee 30 Young. plus cases. Yep, yep. 30 plus cases. Uh, Renee Young, Kayla Braxton, Adam Pierce, and Jamie Nobles are the ones that have released it on Twitter. WWE are not apparently very happy that Renee did announce that she had COVID. Um, but 30 people, 30 employees, some of them being wrestlers. It blows my mind. What? Look, after WrestleMania, just, ha- just, just take a break. Get WrestleMania out of the way and just take the summer off, you know? Yeah. Uh, we've got the network. We've got plenty of wrestling. We're not going to miss WWE for, what, three, four months? We're not going to miss it for three, four months. In but, fact, three or four months off from wrestling might be quite nice. We'd so, miss it. We'd look forward yeah, to it coming back. Exactly. But, but yeah. Vince, doesn't, Vince doesn't think like that. And, you know, I, no. I, briefly going back, you know, like I say to that comment I made earlier about how money can protect you, uh, Vince McMahon is is guarded by quite a lot of money, and so various things like backlash around speaking out, and also backlash around the continuation of WWE programming during this time. Vince McMahon is never going to touch him. It's never going to touch him. He said, "What well, there was an article the other day where Vince was said to believe that COVID nineteen wasn't that bad, and I think that was something from the internal internal sort of WWE machine." And it just goes to show you how much he actually is in touch with his roster. It's a probably tri- it's Triple H that, that is the one, you know, delivering the conferences and stuff. I think um, if uh, Arn Anderson said in an interview the other day, which was quite telling, you know, from what he knows of a day of Vince McMahon, he goes to his, he flies to the next town, goes to his hotel, goes to the venue, sets up his office. Leaves the leaves the venue, goes back to his hotel, and flies to the next town. There's very little engagement with the actual affairs of the superstars right. that Vince McMahon is involved with. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he actually knows very much at all about what's happening in his company. He knows what the yes men that are around him tell him. You know. I mean, I, just, I can't wait for Triple H to get the company. Just give it to Triple H and just leave him to it. You know, so. I, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if that's yeah, not happening. I, that's not happening to the know. guys. I, 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 I just don't no. know anymore. Just, could you imagine if the main roster played out how NXT plays out, though? You know, where storylines mean something and they actually have a beginning, middle, and end, and the usually satisfying ends. Usually, yeah. and, and you know, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? That's so, interesting. Is, is it, isn't Vince in charge of NXT now, Anthony? Yeah, well, uh, well I'm going to well, speak after, about that later. That'd be fun. After the finish of the Charlotte match in your house, I'd imagine that he probably is in charge there now, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, he is. We're going to go into that at the end. But uh, yeah, so Vince, uh, the problem with, with, with this for me is, again, what comes to about regulation. I don't necessarily think that this is just WWE's fault. WWE is doing the bare minimum in terms of COVID tests. Uh, in terms of keeping superstars safe and stuff like that. If it enters that building and they've just done temperature checks and they don't know because they're not doing blood tests, then they're, they're not just putting the people that are entering the building at risk. They're putting the people that the people from the building's families at risk. They're putting mm-hmm. everyone at risk. And I mean, th- this like this could cause some massive lawsuits for WWE if if... If someone, for, for God forbid, loses a parent because they've caught this at the WWE Performance Center that wasn't doing appropriate testing, that's going to be a lawsuit in years to come, isn't it? And that's going to be they've, worth millions. They've got Ric Flair on TV every week. Why? The guy's like 102 years old. You know, his, his, face, is, his face is falling off his skeleton. Like, it like is. let him go home. Yeah. Send him home. They shouldn't be bringing him back, and and it's a decision that they've made to bring him back in this same 
dangerous environment. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of unrest, isn't there? There's a lot of unrest yeah. internally. A lot of sources, confidential sources, are talking about how uh, someone referred to it as a, we've been swearing on the podcast, so I'm just going to carry on a, a shit show. You know, though I think that was an actual internal, you know, member of staff and roster member, you know, echoed that sentiment. People on the inside are not happy about being there and are not happy about the way things are being run. Understandably, and certain superstars have spoke out about that, i.e. Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens has, has done the same, you know, and but it is, it's, it's, it, I agree with Rivers completely. You stop wrestling for a couple of months and people would want it so much more. And do you know the only thing that WWE are good at? Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting angry. Do you know the only thing that WWE oh, are any good at these days? Making documentaries. They make oh, yeah, yeah, wonderful yeah, yeah. documentaries yeah. all the time, right? Yeah. Use that TV time to show them awesome documentaries. Get people excited for the return of this. Yeah. The cinematic matches. I love the cinematic matches as well. I think they're great too. But they're documentaries in themselves. Yeah, some of them. Are, yeah. So, yeah, I think they're... Yeah. They're, yeah, yeah like, Boneyard you know, matches like, are really good. Make your mind up about who you kind of want to be your, your, your upper echelon, your top guys. Make documentaries about them and get them over that way, you know. And, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, all the tw- the twenty four series. You know, AJ Styles was great. The uh, Edge one made me cry. You know, um, mm, yeah. Uh, the Undertaker five part series was great. Oh yeah, you're right. The documentaries are spot on, and that would be yeah. a great way of getting the roster over without having the weekly matches and so on and so forth. You know. Mm. Yeah, and it's not and just you've got WWE. The back on, on, yeah, on, ex- absolutely. You put on a one-hour yeah, documentary about Becky Lynch and then show the Royal Rumble from or, or whatever, you know, or, or four yeah. matches of Becky Lynch's best of type but, thing, you know? But they have obligations to, to their network, you know. Um, I, I, the, but they could just show reruns. They could just show reruns, yeah. you know. Like well, under they, these circumstances, though, I think in a court of law, under these circumstances, they could probably get out of their... Uh, Commitments yeah. to the network, you know. Yeah. And for seeing circumstances, I don't know. You know, well, aware, but, you know. At the start of this, they were saying, oh, no, we've got to give them live shows because we're signed into line shows. No, we're in a worldwide emergency. Yeah. Let's yeah. renegotiate this because we can't safely do it, right? Mm. The, yeah. the, the football teams that were playing matches all had to stop and they come to arrangements with the TV companies. That's... It just won't happen. I mean, I mean, yeah. they're back now, but you know. Yeah, but that's that's because it's been deemed safe, and whether it is or not isn't for us to decide. That's that's for the government. Mm-hmm. Hey, but you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. So, uh, ready? Young's got COVID nineteen, which means John Moxley can't uh, have his match at Fighter Fest um, against um, Brian Cage. Brian Cage. Uh, obviously, he lives in the same household as Renee, and he has said, uh, been quoted to say that he doesn't want to um, risk it getting to other people and wants to do the right thing and is staying off TV for that reason. And but, living yeah. his gimmick, living that good guy gimmick, you know, living, living the face gimmick there as well by not spreading it around. Absolutely. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think it was a ploy by Vince McMahon all along, you know, like I think it was Vince McMahon <laughs> who deliberately got Rene Young infected. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Uh, I think yeah. yeah. So all of that news, right, which is all big news. Um, let's talk about Undertaker retiring. Because <laughs> that's what I like it. Yeah, I was all happy. I was quite happy about it. Not because obviously I appreciate the legacy of the Undertaker. I was like, yeah, good. Good. <laughs> well, no, let me explain. I think they handled it really well. I think they handled it really well. Finally, finally, they've done it. Great. They've done a documentary. They, yeah, they've done a documentary. Uh, it's the right time. It was the right last match. Fantastic. All right, we've had about 50 retirements, but now it felt like the finally, this was finally it. They've done hashtag thank you, Taker. Um, they've like, you know, they've... they've Which was better than having hashtag yeah. COVID-19 WWE. Yeah, they, re- <laughs> they replayed the Boneyard match. And I think it was the highest rated SmackDown, which just goes to show you what we're talking about, how they could just do reruns and it would be popular. I think it was the highest rated SmackDown for, for, for months. And uh, then Sting shows up. <laughs> uh, on, on Twitter, I, I thought he was off to AEW, but I don't know whether that's happening now. Well, I, I personally can't wait for 60 year old Sting versus 55, 6 year old Undertaker. That's going to be a hell of a match, right? 
but, but, Definitely but shouldn't have happened 20 fucking years ago. But still <laughs> it now. It'll be a cinematic it match. It'll be a cinematic <laughs> match. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be... You said a moment ago, like, oh, it was the right match for Undertaker to end on. The right match for Undertaker to end on would have been that Triple H Shawn Michaels match in the Hell in a Cell when they all walked off together on the stage. And that had a little have cuddle. That, man. that yeah. little cuddle, a little cuddle and a kiss, fade to black, <laughs> credits. That should have been the end of that, you know? So, yeah. They just kept dragging him out and dragging him out. And it's just, you know, it got to a point where I was worried for the guy because he's old. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because I say that the the Goldberg match, the like the Goldberg match. That was that. Do you know? Do you know? And actually, that was better than the Fiend Goldberg match as well. Jesus, it was. Yeah. So no, one of the interesting things I find about this is is the Undertaker is retiring. That is massive news. It is. It don't feel that. It it don't feel that big because it's it's happened twenty times already. It feels like a bit of a wet fire, really, doesn't well, it? No, you know? no, no, it yeah. feels bigger because he admitted it in the documentary. He said he didn't want to get back in the ring. Yeah, that yeah, was... but then he left his coat in the ring at WrestleMania 35. What I'm saying is he's always retiring. He left his no, coat in there no. because he's old. He's getting <laughs> Alzheimer's. He he's forgot. He's getting shit. He's old. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was too warm so, for him to put his trench coat back on. The, the question yeah, was... I told you when he should have retired. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So the question is then, guys, the question is, is he coming back for the Sting match? Yeah, of course he is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of I kind of want to see I, it. I do, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm yeah, happy no, for it. I do, I'd love to see a cinematic match, but I just, yeah. I want to see The Undertaker retire with a bit more fanfare. I want to see it in front of a massive 10,000 plus audience on a episode of Raw or a pay-per-view, maybe a Survivor Series where he debuted. Maybe he can have a little retirement but, ceremony. Like, just make something big of it, you know? Like, he yeah. announced it at the end of the documentary, and then on a shitty episode of SmackDown, Jeff Hardy's in the middle of the ring doing his Undertaker gimmick thing. And, and yeah, you know, I'm just like, it just felt like a bit of a wet fart. And I was like, oh, we need more fanfare, more, you know, because he's uh, kind of the biggest deal in wrestling in the last 30 years. Uh, I, don't, I don't think yeah. it's a good idea to put him in front of a crowd. Well, I, I, no, I, I think it's okay. It's about what you make him do in front of a crowd. So well, you like, can't have you can't have Sting and Undertaker wrestle a match in a ring. It's yes. just oh, not no. going to work. L- listen, no matches in front of the audience. I'm just talking about some kind of retirement ceremony, like the oh. Ric Flair on Raw. You know, so what you do is you have uh, so next year WrestleMania is Hollywood, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you do a whole Hollywood brawl that the film over five weeks so that the guys uh, stay fresh and, and uh, you know, need IV drips or what have you. Um, so you have them have the match, you show that out, and then they teleport into the ring, Tombstone, to, uh, Undertaker, Tombstone, Sting, and that's the end of it. That would that'd be, yeah. be a great crowd reaction. Yeah. And as long as the match is, is, is exciting and enthralling, then, yeah, yeah that, that sort of thing is fine. And that's where I think you can get him in the ring, uh, Dom. Or you can have him stood above the Titan Tron or something like that. Yeah, can you imagine... What you just said, what you just said, like, you know, like, film all the brawls or whatever it might be, a boneyard match into a parking lot brawl into the arena. And then, yeah, like yeah. I said, they come out of the curtain, they punch and kick each other down to the ring, quick choke, slam, tombstone, done. Done. Yeah. That's it, you know? yeah. The match happens Perfect. off, but the yeah. crowd reacts to the yeah. moment yeah. of, of yeah. the ending of the match. Yeah, mm. yeah, that'd be yeah. a good and, way. And you do that for however long they want to do it. You know, if it, I thought uh, that I thought they might do that with uh, Fiend and Cena because that whole kind of weird, trippy, psychedelic, uh, cinematic match. And I, I thought it was going to cut back to the ring and like uh, the Fiend would be behind Cena and like hit him with the sister Abigail and pin him. You know, but it yeah. just kind of ended. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah I'm, I'm with you. I really wanted the match yeah. to start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do all that kind of crazy stuff. And then, like, in the ring, like, Cena wakes up out of this lucid dream in the yeah. middle of the ring. And then, you know, he's actually in the ring in real time. And then, you know. I'm just yeah. going to let you guys talk on this one because I, I love that match and I love The Fiend. So, uh, no, I love it, it too. Don't but it, was, it, it wasn't a match. match. It was a match. There was a three count. <laughs> it wasn't a match, but I did love it. I did love it. It really was. It would have been cool. It would have been cool if Cena woke up in the middle of the ring, like really discombobulated, and, and you know, and the fiends there, and it was yeah. turned into a match, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's what was missing for me big time. Yeah. Um. So that's interesting. Um. Yeah. I. I. I'm. I'm fine with the Undertaker doing the cinematic matches. I think uh, they're exciting, and they can go on for however long he's got. If he, if he's happy doing it, let it happen. I, I, with Rivers, I think you need that moment 
of something in the ring or something or standing yeah. tall in front of the audience. And I think that that's a way that you, you give the crowd that are there something other than just video screens. Closure. The, 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 yeah, the fans need that closure, I think, as well. More so than The mm. Undertaker, I think, for the mm. fans. They need that kind of closure mm. where, you know, that fades to black shot of the crowd saying, thank you, Taker, 10,000 strong. And it just, you know, it'll be a wonderful yeah. fitting end, you know. I mean, the only the only thing, sorry to go back to it, but the only two matches that I can think of where they've sort of done that in the past is obviously the Hollywood brawl with uh, Goldust and Roddy Piper. But in more recent times, they did the House of Horrors match with Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton, but that didn't work, did it? No. No. I wonder no. why that was. I think it was just a bit naff. That was naff. Yeah, I can't really remember. I remember like the, the, the brawl in the house and then didn't Orton get into a car and just drive away? Or yeah, and then yeah. they wound up in the arena. I can't really remember how it played out. Up in the arena, yeah. there was maggots and yeah, whatever maggots and a projector. Yeah. But we're not. No, that, that, that was that was that was WrestleMania. That one, that one. Oh. What yeah. didn't work about that match is they didn't go far enough with it. Like if it, if they went more psychedelic and freaky and just crazy with it, you know, yeah. like some real some real nightmare kind of stuff. I agree. Then I yeah. think it would have worked better. They were just yeah. basically brawling in an abandoned house. It so was, it was someone like getting that. a fridge tipped on them yeah. that felt really. Yeah. 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 yeah, we we are we are of course going way off topic. Uh, I like a good waffle. Uh, but Conor yeah. McGregor. Yeah, is this the last? Is this the last news piece? No, no, no. It's not the last news piece at all. Go on then. Go on Why? Then. What's up? Are you tired or something? No, no. I'm actually yeah, really enjoy- I'm really enjoying this actually. So good. We're having a conversation. Man. We're having a conversation. To hell with your topics. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> right, Conor McGregor is uh, apparently tweeted out challenging Vince McMahon to a fist fight for the WWE title. Uh, I mean, it's good for business. It's, t- it's going to be about. It's going to be about as good as um, Tyson Fury's, you know, um, chance. Yeah, to Conor McGregor has charisma, though, doesn't he? But Tyson Fury, you know, I think I just like him because he's a Mancunian and he's massive. <laughs> you know, like like. Conor McGregor's just a bit up himself, and I don't. I think he would rock the boat. I don't think he will play ball with. I don't think he'll ever actually sign anything. He might have a one-off appearance. In a oh, he's got to go to the UFC retirement home, man. Yeah, he he won't he won't he won't be in WWE. <laughs> yeah, the, the WWE is the UFC retirement home. He's not going. He's not going to be for for a, for anything more than one match. They they could not cope with him. They can't afford him. They can't afford. Yeah. If he gets a hundred million for having a boxing match, then they're, they're never going to be able to pay anywhere near that kind of money yeah. for him. You know? No, and, uh, and yeah. I think he, I think he knows that, and I think they know that. Yeah. I think it's a one-shot deal, if anything. Um, you know. I, well, speaking I, though, uh, you mentioned that he, he called out Vince McMahon, wanted to punch Vince McMahon, getting okay, a fist fight with Vince McMahon. Yeah. It's funny that Conor McGregor has called Vince McMahon out because he's got a history of punching old dudes in bars, hasn't he? <laughs> so, uh, Conor McGregor. So, um, so it's quite fitting that he called out the, the, the old guy. The old guy, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah he didn't call, out, he didn't call fair, out Triple H. To be fair, Vince, Vince, is, uh, Vince is probably... He'd probably do it. He'd probably go for the fight. You know what he's like. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. you know, probably go for it. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the next Saudi show, uh, but yeah. <laughs> which is the greatest uh, pay per view of all time. Yeah. Um, the Knox County Board of Health in Tennessee, that's in Knox County, Wednesday, obviously where Kane is mayor. He's mayor of Knox County, is that right, Tom? They had a voting, which was to see whether they were going to pass a mandate of people to wear masks outside or inside certain buildings. The board voted seven in one in favour of the mandate. The one person who voted against the mandate was the man who'd been wearing a mask his entire career. Publicity. (laughs) That's publicity. He That's knew. That's not publicity. It is. It is. That's not publicity. It is. It is. He knew he wasn't going to win. Like he knew that that was the majority. So that's what was going to be done. The majority wins. So he won. 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 You, you know. don't know his opinion. Look, I, I agree with you that like Trump's an idiot and Schwarzenegger can tweet out some stupid things sometimes. It's, I wouldn't say that's publicity. Politics. Uh, publicity. I think it is. I think if you listen to the way he talks about COVID. In his interviews, I think right. he, I think he's clever. I think he's clever enough to know that people are going to write about it. I thought it was funny. Yeah, well, exactly. I, I, but, think, I think it'd be really cool to see a Kane style COVID mask. You know, that'd be awesome. There is one. So, is there? WWE shop oh, have well, one. Okay. Yeah. Of course there is. Yeah, of course. The ironic thing but is, it's funny. 
He's always been wearing a mask. He says he's been wearing a mask his entire career. Even yeah, so, man. before he was not wearing a mask, he was wearing the metaphorical mask of fake diesel, wasn't it? You know, the diesel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. he, he has been wearing masks his entire career. And before the then, he was the wearing a, a surgeon mask. Yeah, the surgeon dental. mask. The dental <laughs> mask yeah. yes, exactly. <laughs> Very good. Fun stuff. Um, Walter, NXT UK. Uh, WWE want him to go to main roster. He's standing fast and saying, no, I'm not going. Um, well, our Imperium have gone to the main... Well, they've gone to NXT in America, haven't they? So, um, you know, they're the current, are they the current champions or are they just losing? Yeah, they're current tag title. Yeah, title. so, title. I mean, uh, good on him, I suppose. I mean, obviously, he's very, very tied to his home country. Um, and, you know, very, very... He's very, very happy with the schedule, isn't he, of NXT UK? Um, yeah, he, so the reason that he doesn't want to go to main roster is he doesn't, he, does, he doesn't want to move to America. He wants to stay in Europe. I think he lives in Austria. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. he, he doesn't want to do all the dates. He just wants to do what he's doing at the minute. And what he does at the minute is he flies into NXT UK, stays for a few days, flies back. Um, does when he does main or... roster... Yes, yeah, when he does thing. NXT, he'll fly across there, but he doesn't want to live out there. He doesn't want to be part of a main roster touring show. And unless he's going to do that, WWE couldn't do anything with him. He could never be champion if he's not going to land you with yeah. most other people. Is like he still that. UK champ? Yes, he is. He is, yeah. yeah. And what's, yes. is, is NXT UK going to survive this, this whole speaking yes. up movement? Like, yeah, is it going to be so. all right? Well, no, there's been, a, there's been a conference this week. Triple H hosted a conference with the NXT UK uh, staff. Uh, that's where the firings of the referees happened and the suspension right. of Joe Coffey. Um, he said that they were taking the allegations seriously, but they do plan to, at least for the foreseeable future, continue on with... Keep the um, promotion running. Yeah, and I yeah. believe there's a pay-per-view yeah. coming up. I believe there's a pay-per-view coming up and they're going to start doing... Oh, that's it. good. That's good. Because I, yeah. I enjoy NXT UK. Because it's you know, great. I think it's quite a decent one. So, yeah. Good. We, you, can, you, can see, see go. you can see a number of uh, NXT UK superstars being interviewed on our channel recently as well. Um, we've done we've done uh, quite a few, haven't we, recently? Yes. Good, so. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah there's... Uh, yeah. I, I, the, the main thing of that call, I think, to come out, apart from the joke office suspension, was that they are taking the, the allegation seriously, so pack it in. Is, is is the basic yeah. thing that Triple H said, which is fair enough. Yeah. But but it's nice to know that they've got no plans, and they did they did specify. It was interesting the wording because they did say for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Of, of not, the, the can't do shows at the minute. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the, the show. But I mean, but I mean, not to discontinue NXT UK. That was the that was the wording was. Yeah, a lot of people said it was going to. I, I never thought it was going to because it's too important to. To WWE, it really is. Um, they've got a lot of stars in there that, the, that don't want going to other companies. I think we're the second biggest market for them, aren't they? Are we? So yeah, it makes yeah it makes no sense. And I mean, it's it's doing better numbers than Two or Five Live, you know. Yeah. So yeah. why get rid of it? Um, yeah, cool. Fighter Fest next week. Well, yeah, they've just had night one. John Moxley's gone. We've got yeah. a puppy wrestling battle royale. What is that? I have no idea, but I can't it, wait. Yeah, I mean, does it not? Is it not a little bit tacky? I have no idea. It's a puppy battle royal. I've never seen one. Are but we it, talking about Jerry Lawler's version of puppy? No, no. <laughs> especially not right now. No, we're not. Um, ah. No, no. This is an actual. Well, sorry, boys. If it's not Jerry Lawler's version, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> You're out. Yeah, I'm not having it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just think yeah. it's mad. I just think it's fun. I like it. We'll it's see. great. We'll I see. can't wait to see I what mean, it is. They, they, can move, they can move Jericho and uh, Orange Cassidy to the main event. They can move a number of those matches to a main event. Oh, I think it'll be the um, eight-man tag match. That, that screams main event, doesn't it? Remind me of the... Perth the Christmas Young one. Bucks um, for the oh. revolt. Um, versus the, Butcher and Blade and uh, the Lucha Bros. Yeah, yeah, good. That scream. Well, personally, personally, I can't wait to see at least 10 Canadian destroyers off a ladder through a table <laughs> and they kick out of every single one, you know? And yeah. as long as they're wearing kick pads, I'm cool, man. I'm in. What can I say? <laughs> Flips and kick pads and, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. <clears throat> I can't wait for it, actually. I think that's going to be a hell of a match. Super kicks, yeah. Super kicks everywhere. A super yeah. kick party, indeed. Uh, WWE are not happy with Taz's promo from AEW Fighter Fest last night. Um, the, in Taz's promo, he said, As you know, we don't run a sloppy shop, referring to uh, WWE's COVID testing. Uh, Taz has nothing to lose at this point in his career. Uh, he's, 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 he can and he will say things like that. Obviously, he got the very short end of the stick uh, with his WWE booking. Uh, he had one of the greatest debuts of all time, I would argue, uh, and then got completely stuffed. Greatest um, debuts of all yeah, time. You, you have way too many greatest, dude. Right. Does anyone remember that Kurt Angle match? Yes, the one yeah. at the Royal Rumble. Brilliant. The one, yeah. That was a good match, yeah. I don't know if it was one of the greatest One of the greatest of all... debuts of all time. Okay, The Fiend. Was that a better debut? Yes. Right, so it's not the greatest, then, is it? I I've named say, one wrestler. I I've I named say, one wrestler. You I thought, say you... the greatest? No, no. You, everything's the greatest to you. Shut up! I said one I of the mind. greatest. Stop being such a WWE shill. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We all know you're on the payroll, Dom. All right. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> uh, groovy let's move on from Taz's Taz. you know the last guest we had uh, Rivers we had the ringsiders on here and uh, yeah. Dom suddenly turned into the biggest Jinder Mahal fan of all I time I am a huge oh, Jinder really? Mahal fan I love Jinder yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jinder Jinder <laughs> my balls <laughs> Jinder Mahal Jinder, <laughs> Jinder, mm. Jinder Mahal yeah. Yeah. Jinder Mahal uh, next yeah. up, EC3. Great promo on Twitter. Go check it out. Um, he was talking about terrors with lockdown and quarantine and all of that. Let me read this promo out to you because it hints at where he might be going. And this is brilliantly written. From coast to coast, Maine to SoCal uncensored, chaos and confusion reign supreme. You walk outside, it feels like you're in a jungle, boy. You fear the revolt is coming to you if you don't adhere to the group thinking. You feel like you're left out to hang, man. The natural state of things has fallen into this dark order as you plug away day after day like a gear in an effing machine. Society is broken, but now is the time you keep your inner circle small. You do have best friends. You can only trust yourself. And it doesn't matter if you're an old man or a young book, you speak the truth. You stand tall, exalted. You rise like a phoenix. You carry yourself with moxie and seal it with a sunny kiss. Now these bastards may criticize you. They may mock you. They may cancel you. Hell, they may even imitate you poorly. But never give in. Never apologize. You put the word sorry back into the dictionary. You throw it into the library, into its face, because it is never the end. There is no omega when you are an alpha. You think for yourself, you fight for yourself, you control your own narrative. And if you don't, then you're just part of the con. You are more than elite, you are free. And they have been warned. How cool is that? He's still not going to AEW. How cool is that? He's cool. He's great. I'm just annoyed that he turned, he turned me down the other week and I'm gutted. <laughs> we, had a, we had a nice little email chain, me and EC3, for a bit. Uh, one day, one day maybe. But um, yeah, I, I've got a lot of admiration for him. I think he's going to impact still. I think it's a curveball. Um, Could be, yeah. Uh, I think he knows he, he knows how he's one of the better promos in the game right now and he's not even got a promotion. He's, he's doing his own promos and they're all brilliant. Um, you know, he talks, I know, right? It's WWE, just well, give him time. He, he, talked, he talked to me briefly about... He's got a very specific narrative and a mission that he wants to portray over the next few months. So he's got to be very careful about what he does, where he appears, and that he's, he's, he's thought all this through um, from our brief conversation. And it's quite, it's quite impressive because clearly he's got a vision for where he's going. So maybe he's playing yeah, everybody. He had a great running impact back, back a few years ago when he was on impact. He had a really good run there. So yeah. it'd be nice to see him back. I mean, I'd be nice to see him back. Would I prefer to see him in AEW? Probably. But uh, yeah. But I think he. I think. Um, I mean, Eric Young's probably going back to Impact. I think that's that he was he was teased as that it was either him or James Storm. 
and I think that were teased as the... Well, Impact have sort of teased everyone, haven't they? Because they've got yeah. Slam Aversary, is it, coming up? Slam coming up, yeah. Which is the same day that the wrestlers can wrestle again. And they, they have said that they are going to have some of them guys come in. The Heath Slater's been teasing it. There's lots of guys that have been teasing it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. And but... they are known for their WWE guys, you know, their ex-WWE guys. So, you know, and obviously there is... While there are lots of options, you know, your Ring of Honours and your AWs, you know... I mean, if a contract is offered and a decent contract, then they'll take it. And I think that uh, Impact, you know, I think Impact have the pick of everybody at the moment because AEW has to be very careful because because obviously a lot of their top guys are ex WWE guys right now, so they're going to be careful about who they bring in. I think there you go again, Don, being a shill again for the WWE. They're not WWE guys, okay? They're independent contractors, okay? <laughs> so enough with, oh, they're just, they're just WWE light, okay? Uh, really, yeah. <laughs> I see you, buddy. I see you. All right. <laughs> he is a shill for it, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you get Jinder Mahal on your show? Interview Jinder Mahal. Ask him why he sucks. Oh. Jinder Mahal, the, the greatest yeah. wrestler of all time. Do you remember yeah. his debut? I didn't great. Say, I didn't, oh, great. I didn't say the yeah, greatest uh, of all time. I just said he was good. I said I'm a fan. I am a fan. He's great. Uh, he right, he's the move. greatest roided up guy you've ever seen in your life. He had the best <laughs> debut ever in the history of mankind. And it's the when he Punjabi retired. The Punjabi prison wrestling. match was the best he match of all time. It, it wasn't <laughs> terrible. I like seeing the great Cal either. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. Just oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> right, uh, you wanted to talk about this, Dom. This is our last thing, so you can go off crazy because you wanted like uh, to discuss this lots. Um, NXT last week beat. We don't have the ratings for this week yet. We are filming this on Thursday night. Um, they beat AEW Dynamite for the second time of all time. Now, the interesting thing about that is this was one of the shows, one of the first shows where Vince has taken over NXT. And straight away, when that happens, they've got a win over AEW Dynamite. Now, the the viewing numbers, AEW still won in the important demographic, which is forty, which is nineteen to forty nine, but NXT won overall because I've got loads of old people that still watch it. Um, isn't that interesting though? That the the one week we all say Vince stay away from NXT. How do you feel about that, Rivers? I think it's kind of interesting. I think um, it's more to do with people being morbidly curious to what he's going to do to it. And that's maybe why it spikes the, the, the figures a little bit, you know? So, mm. um, yeah, I think it's maybe a, you more... Because I watched last week, and I don't necessarily watch it weekly. I, I, I tend to be a highlight guy, but I did tune in last week. So, um, you know, because I, I was morbidly curious, like when I was hearing all the reports of Vince taking over and, and you know, taking head of the show. So, mm. uh, you know, I was just expecting it to be an absolute nightmare, like the main roster is. So. Yeah, but instead what they're doing is they're sort of throwing, th- just throwing stuff away, man. Yeah. Vince has this habit of just throwing everything at something or, you know, the main roster at the minute, it, it's not, it's not about making wrestlers interesting. It's if you look at this week's Raw, you had MVP beating Apollo Crews, you had Big Show on there, you had Ric Flair mm. on there. It's not it's doing anything. It's 2020, and we've got Big Show on TV. Yeah, uh, it's, proven, it's insane to me. A proven ratings draw. What's the what's the massive? What's the majority demographic? It's old people. Of course, of course, that's going to pop the ratings. Yeah, I agree, but the but the problem is it's not it's not making a future, is it? No, but no, it, no but it's doing what Vince needs it to do right now, which is beat. I would say, I would say, because um, I, I believe I heard that Paul Heyman wanted eighteen months to build a handful of wrestlers that he kind of selected. Yeah, you know? yeah. Ricochet was I, one of them. Ricochet was one of yeah. them. Uh, Cedric Alexander was another. I don't believe that Ricochet right. was one of them because he's he on was. main event now. So how could he be? No, how but he was. He was, and then it got poo-pooed. Vince McMahon poo-pooed the... But that's exactly oh, okay. what they need to be doing right now is they need to be spending a year and a half building people and storylines. They need to take the hit now and maybe take a few uh, uh, lower ratings now to build mm. these guys to hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, in a year and a half from now, people will give a shit. And, yeah. You know, it'll slowly grow the audience. But it's interesting. From one got... week to the next, it's just, I can't keep up with it, you know. And yeah. It's just... yeah. 
Mm. And, and, and I, don't, I, can't, I don't care. I don't really, I, ultimately, I don't give a shit because I can't keep up with it. So therefore, I don't care about, oh, this guy's the next big thing. And I'm like, yeah, in two weeks, Vince is going to be bored of him. And why do I care? So I've seen it happen to too many good guys, you know? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alistair Black being the one that's really hurt most of all in the last couple of years, you know? His debut, to what his debut could have been, to what it was, and what they've done with him, it's just yeah. heartbreaking, you know? There's, there's several guys like that, especially especially yeah. NXT champions like Shinsuke Nakamura, one of the best wrestlers in the yeah. world, without question, is is nothing. Yeah. Um, Bobby Roode, you know, Cesaro, yeah. Cesaro, yeah, all these Cesaro, all these incredible yeah. workers that are just sort of uh, uh, back players in uh, this. I mean, I mean, you know, going further than than EC, you know, EC3, we've made a topic of. He was given a gimmick where it was very similar to um, the Street Profits. He was given a cup, and in segments he was. You know, just sitting with this cup. Oh no, he did that, didn't he? Because he wanted to do something. Because he was yeah. given absolutely nothing. Yeah, and he just did the. He just had the. Just so when he was cup. chasing after the twenty four seven title, he was he was holding a cup. Yeah, and he, he you know he came out in his once glorious entrance, which was awesome, where he had the EC three thing come up. He now just had this cup, you know, and he was just doing something, and you know, it's just a shame, you know. EC guys like EC three, Eric Young, since Sanity, you know, was given nothing. Um, yeah, it's it's well, uh, sanity it's, was given nothing when that. Yeah. Well, I think they had a decent you know, one of the biggest crimes recently, actually. Uh, you talk about Alistair Black, another massive crime that's just happened recently since WrestleMania, Bianca Belair. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. she debuted on yeah. it. She's now and a main event. Yeah, yeah, are you kidding? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, yeah. Weird, isn't it? very weird. Why, why bring them up? Why bring them up if, if you've got nothing, you know? Uh, I keep asking it's myself it. every time, you know. It's in it, you know. It's, I envisage, envisage like um, an Alistair Black debut. I, I just, I, I figured it would be, uh, you know, you could imagine Undertaker in the ring cutting a promo, then the lights go out. Like, you know, it's like, oh, what the hell's going on? Usually, it's the other way around. Like, the lights go out when the Undertaker appears, and then Alistair Black's there and kicks his head off, and then immediately you've got interest, and it's like, oh my god, he just kicks Undertaker's head clean off, and and he could have built something like that, kind of like him being mm-hmm. the the next, I don't know, supernatural kind of guy, you know? Um, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, but, they've, they've yeah, no, the bring, bring him up in a tag team with another NXT guy, and just you know, and just we'll do it that way instead, and mm-hmm. have no mystique uh, and no interest whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Just ah, it, it hurts my heart, man. You know, they could have done so much with that guy, so much potential wasted. Mm-hmm. So, are you a bigger AEW fan or WWE fan at the minute, Rivers? Uh, I'm an NXT guy, I think. NXT so. guy. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I think uh, a, I like AEW, um, but I don't know. I just, you know, the same. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> just you don't like the style. Yeah, what? there's some things I really love. So, there's some of the stuff that harkens back to like '90s style wrestling. I really enjoy. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, and simple little touches like you know uh, wrestlers cutting promos to the camera and not kind of looking off into the distance. Just little things like that that really I really like. Little nuances like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm, I'm definitely my favorite brand, so to speak, would be NXT. So okay, cool. Yeah. Well, it's well, going to get ruined soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. It was a nice while it lasted, you know. So it's good. Um, it's good. Uh, be careful because there is spoilers to um, next week's title match on the internet. So be if you don't want to see that, stay away from them. Um, we won't mention them here. Um, that's all I've got, Dom. Yeah, um, obviously, yeah, it's been a pleasure having you, Rivers. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's been awesome. Obviously, we can we're gonna have me and you are gonna have another debate on uh, wrestling with bands really soon. So we'll sort that out uh, for your return to give me a whole year. I guess. I guess there's nothing. Your else. re-debut. Your re-debut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna. We're I'll gonna come have... in with a new gimmick. You know, I'll come in. With, I'll think of a new gimmick, and we'll yeah. we'll, we'll tackle it from that angle. There you go. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely <laughs> cool. Uh, Anthony, you want to play us out with uh, with our with our outro? Yeah, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, Rivers, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're all going to say, give me a whole year after three, and then we're going to end. Uh, one, two, three. Give me a whole year. Give me a whole year. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell that, yeah. It never works. It never works. <laughs> <laughs> It's a right, terrible bye. gimmick. Did Dom come up with this? Did Dom come up with this idea? It's a terrible <laughs> gimmick. <laughs>